All right, guys, I thought I'd make a little video on how I sharpen knives here in my shop. You know, uh, knives and chisels and that sort of thing uh, is a tool that I use a, a whole lot of. So, um, you know, investing in good knife sharpening and chisel sharpening equipment and, and that sort of thing is a, is, a, is a worthwhile investment to someone like me and, and probably anybody that carries a pocket knife or just wants to sharpen their own kitchen knives or whatever. So. Um, my system is probably a little bit different than maybe uh, some you'll find out there because I sort of use two, uh, two methods and sort of blend them into one. Uh, to start with, I really like these V-Sharp uh, Warthog, uh, yeah, sorry, Warthog sharp Sharpeners. <laughs> That's sort of hard to say. V-Sharp Warthog Sharpeners. Uh, this is the classic two. Apparently they have uh, some, maybe some different versions or whatever, but um, let's see. This this is I was going to give you the part number if uh, if I can find it on here well it's, it's probably pretty easy to find if you just search for classic to V sharp warthog uh, anyway uh, I really like these things they're a little uh, another guitar builder friend is is actually who turned me on to them they're a little spring-loaded um, let me get it up here where you can see it just a little bit better there are spring-loaded um, stones, and when you pull the uh, when you pull your knife through there, it the springs keep pressure on your um, uh, on the blade. So it's it's nice because the way you use it would simulate that of like a natural, you know, um, wet rock or sharpening stone. Like you, you know, that's the that's the process that it makes. So. I'll reposition my camera over here and uh, and show you sort of how I get started. And the V sharps are pretty cool because they have two sides. That one side of the stone here is a 325 grit um, side, and then the other side is a slick, just polishing steel. And there's three different angles down here on the bottom. You can have it set for a, I believe it's tw uh, 20, 25, and 30 degree angle. And, um, you know, just in case you're kind of new to sharpening uh, knives or uh, or anything, uh, you know, essentially, this this is just some old kitchen knife I got that's kind of dull. I thought it'd be a good, a good one to, uh, to use during the test. And as, as you can see here, it's, it's kind of dull, you know. I mean, it, it just, it obviously is, uh, has been used. In general, when you're sharpening a knife, all you're trying to do, if you hold the knife this way, all you're trying to do is bring two points together, you know, perfectly together. So I'm gonna set the knife down. So like if this were the knife here, you're just wanting to make that edge do exactly this. And, you know, in theory, that's real simple and real easy, but in reality, it's kind of hard and aggravating to do. And usually what will happen when you sharpen, you'll start rolling one side over a little bit more. And they call that a wire edge. And you can start feeling that at times. You can, I'll take my pinky nail lots of times and run up the, the side of the blade like that, and you can kind of feel your nail hang on that, uh, on the wire edge. And that little lip, you try to get it to where you've not rolled the lip over one way or the other. But you, that's sort of an indicator to let you know that you are, you know, you're pretty much there. You've made both sides meet in the center. So you kind of look for that wire edge to start with. Then you go to an extremely fine grit or a uh, buffing wheel, like what I'm going to use here in a few minutes. Uh, you use, you know, something just that just barely polishes to roll that lip back into the center because that's that's really your edge and um, you know the steeper the angle meaning like if you put an angle like this on your knife it's going to get way more sharper than if you were to put an angle like this on it so I usually use a 25 degree like on my pocket knives or you know, like this kitchen knife, and I could probably even use less than that on, on this, um, because the bad thing about a really steep angle like that is the edge, the, the blade edge becomes real delicate. You know, it's it's just so, the metal's so thin 
uh, you know, right at the top or the apex of your of your edge. That it's just really easy to chip it or break it off, and it dulls easier. But but it will be sharper for a little while. You know, you just uh, it's just way way more of a delicate edge. So on my tools that I use here in the shop, like where I carve mandolin scrolls or you know any kind of work, luthery work that I do, I will use a 20 degree angle and maybe sometimes even less because it's, you know, but, but I'm being, you know, a little more careful with the, you know, with my, with my knives. It's not like it's a pocket knife that you pull out and, you know, scrape metal with or, you know, cut wire or do all the, all the things that are really bad to dull knives with. So anyway, I'm going to get the camera repositioned and let's start sharpening this and see if we can get it to where it just slices through that piece of paper like butter. Okay, here we go. Um, now what I like to do is I'll just use a little bit of oil. You know, I just use three in one oil because it's cheap and, and you can find it anywhere. And normally what I'll do is I'll just put one one little drop on my blade like that and just take my finger and smear the smear the oil up along the edge of the blade like so just to have a little bit of coating of oil on there that helps to you know probably extend the life of your stones and helps to flow uh, some of the metal shavings away and now on this uh, V sharp thing. I've got my stone set at 25, uh, 25 degrees. I've got the uh, 325 grit stones facing outward, and I I just use this guide here. Uh, pretty much is just a rest to hold the blade against. There is a, a nut that you can loosen here and and adjust the length, the angle of that to where you know theoretically you can match the angle on your um, on your blade, and then you just hold it flat up against it. Um, I sharpen too many different thickness blades and stuff, so I don't fool with doing that. I just eyeball it and just hold the knife straight up and down. Then all you uh, all you gotta do is just drag it down through there like so. And um, you know, depending on obviously how dull your knife is, you know, you might not have to do this that many times. So now. I'm gonna kind of just feel with my thumb there and and see. That's that's starting to feel like it's got a little bit of an edge. Now I'm doing that deal where I was telling you about with my pinky nail, and I'm just kind of feeling to see if I've made that wire edge. And then I'll flip it over and check this way. And most of the time you'll really feel your nail hang on it. Um, and this also depends a little on the quality of the blade now this is some very cheap like chicago cutlery i think kitchen knives that you know were probably not the highest grade steel out there for sure and i may not be able to find or may not be able to feel that wire edge on these knives I might be feeling a little bit of one. Right there, maybe. It's starting to feel, you know, you can kind of feel how sharp it's getting, you know, by, you know, just how well it drags on your thumb when you do that. I think this one's pretty much just about there. So, now what I've done here is I bought two of these V-Sharps, which they run about 70 bucks or so, which, you know, for the average person, you probably wouldn't need to, but I just like having two set up. Now this one has some 1,000 grit stones on it. You can buy uh, 600 grit and 1,000 grit stones. And I think I had this one set for um, a different angle. So let me, this is how you change the angle of the stones. You just pop the top out and then you just move it to the to the angle that you want down there on the bottom and snap it back in. And I'll do the same thing to this one. Lots of times I'll just use the, the knife or something to get in there and kind of just pry it off because when these things are new and this one here is new, the black one I've had for a long time, um, Oh, 
I'll have this off. This will be a good time to show you. This is the 1000 grit side of this stone, and these are the polishing steels. Now, you uh, you can use these polishing steels if you want to, and they, and they do a pretty good job, but I have another way that I put the final edge on my knives here in the shop. So, anyway, now we've got that back set up and going. So, I'm just going to drag it through here on the same 25 degree angle that I had uh, that I had my 325 grit stone set at and this in case you're new to knife sharpening or or that sort of thing this is just a, a finer stone it's just gonna polish you know it won't the the edge won't be nearly as coarse it'll be much finer and that's starting to, to feel pretty good um, yeah, it's it's definitely uh, it's beginning to get an edge on it now. I don't really. It's hard for me to feel the wire edge on these knives. It might just be because the steel is so soft or so cheap or whatever that it just kind of falls off whenever it um, whenever it gets to that point. So uh, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to really feel that on on these knives. So I'm just going to run it through these thousand grit stones just a few more times just to kind of clean clean it up a little bit. And then I'll show you what I do afterwards. Okay, now what I have here is a little 8-inch bench grinder that came from Harbor Freight. Uh, it's just a really cheap bench grinder. And what I like to do for the final edge is I will buff the edge of the, of the knife. And that really just makes it nice and slick. A lot of people... Um, will like in the old days they'd use a leather strop i think they call it and they just rake it you know rake the knife back and forth like that on a on a piece of leather but this just does that way faster now what i do is because i don't like the thing turning this direction uh because i'd have to use it yeah i'd have to hold the knife like this i just spin the grinder around and just put the power button on the back and I just reach around the back and turn it on. Now my wheels are turning this way away from me and get this in the camera a little better. And now I can just, you know, polish my edge like this, which I prefer a lot more. So I'm gonna try to get this thing positioned where, where you can see what I do real uh, much easier. And you can, you can use some buffing compound, like this is Jewelers Rouge, it just comes in blocks, so uh, you can get it at Lowe's and you can probably get really big blocks of it, like it, just any, anywhere online that sells buffing compounds and that sort of thing. But the, the white stuff usually works really good, I think that's generally considered to be a Jewelers Rouge. So what I'll do lots of times is just, I'll turn my, my grinder on, it gets up to speed, and I'll just lightly run a little bit of the compound on it. Now, what I'm going to do is, is just polish that edge. I'm going to come over here and do this side. Oh yeah, it's starting to feel feel pretty sharp now. Now you're kind of at the mercy for sure of the quality of the steel that's in your knife when you do this. That's starting to feel pretty sharp. It's definitely, yeah, it's definitely kind of, kind of taking a little bit off of my calluses on my, on my hands there really easily. So I think we're probably about there. I think it's probably about as sharp as it's gonna get. Alright. 
So we'll have to do the paper test now. Okay, another thing I want to mention, guys, is a lot of people will get frustrated because they're like, I'm sharpening and I'm sharpening and I'm sharpening and I'm just not getting anywhere. Well, one thing you have to remember is the angle that you are putting on your blade may not be the exact same angle that the factory put on there. Meaning, you know, if this is a 25 degree angle from the factory or the previous edge was a 25 degree angle and you have your sharpener set to put a 20 degree angle on there, well, you see, you're not touching the the top edge of the of the uh, blade, the actual edge of the blade. You're actually removing more metal off the side here, and it is going to be a slow process to, you know, put a new angle on your blade. So you got to remember that um, because that's that's something that will frustrate a lot of people. They might may, may get a knife sharpener and say, "Oh, this sharpener is no good because I mean, I just couldn't get my knife sharp." Well there's a really good chance what was happening was they actually never got to the to the center of their blade while they were sharpening they they were still over here whacking off the you know the side of it and uh, still changing their angle so that's that's another thing to to take note of you could even take a little sharpie and color like the edge of your uh the knife and then run it through your knife sharpener and then look at it and see if the see if you have removed um, your sharpie mark from the center or from the top because you know until you do that you're not going to have a sharp knife you've not even hit the edge yet you know you're still working on the side of the blade so do keep that in mind when you're sharpening and if it seems like it's you know going really slow you may want to change the angle or you know if you're really really dead set on you know putting this new angle on your blade um, you know just keep that in mind and, and it's probably going to take you a few extra strokes um, now on the flip side <laughs> If you had a 20 degree angle on the on the knife to start with and now you're wanting to put a 25 degree angle oh that's gonna go in a hurry it won't take you no time to uh, um, to get the knife sharp you know if, if that's the case so but anyway just keep that in mind because that's something I think that a lot of people ignore or they don't maybe understand you know what's going on or why you know they can't get their knife sharp okay here I am again and uh, I will admit that I went back uh, after I turned the camera off and got the camera sort of out of my way where I could hold these knife sharpeners and everything like in a, in a way that's way more comfortable to me instead of trying to have to reach around my camera. Um, so I went back and I, and I touched this up like I normally would do it if I wasn't filming. And uh, now I've got an edge on it that's uh, pretty decent, I think, for the quality of knife that this is. You know, it's not a you know, a nice high-end pocket knife or, uh, you know, any kind of spectacular steel by no means. So, but anyway, here's that same uh, piece of paper that uh, I had earlier that it was just kind of tearing through. So now you can see that it'll just pretty much slice right through it. There is a nick in the edge and the blade of this thing. If I stay away from that and stay down there on the, on the high part, or on the part that's kind of not been damaged, you can see just how, how how well it wants to do. But there is a nick in the in the blade that uh, this is just an old kitchen knife, so I don't I'm not going to take the time to <laughs> to get that nick out, um, especially no more than I could. But anyway, that's um, uh, a good a good idea of sort of what you can do to you know get your knives as sharp using this same sort of system. So there you go. It's uh, what I like to do. It works really good for me. And um, hopefully, uh, you know, there's a, uh, like the old saying goes, you know, there's uh, more than one ways to drive to Dallas, I guess you can say. And this is just um, the knife sharpening method that I have found that works really good for me. Um, you know, when I, I do sharpen my chisels in a little different fashion, but I do always finish them off over here on my little uh, bench grinder with the cotton buffing wheel. And, and, you know, it's the same principle there. You can feel that little wire edge and you just buff until the edge goes, until you feel that little wire edge go away. 
and uh, the buffing I, I think really were where all the um, you know where, where the sharpness really lies is in your finishing process your whether you're using a buffing wheel or a leather strop or anything that's really where you're going to get that just razor's edge um, I, or that's been my experience anyway I there I've never been able to really finish off with a stone that would give me the same sort of razor edge that a buffing wheel or a leather strop or something really fine where you can just polish off that that last little bit of that wire edge so I think that's the the main thing but these um, these little uh, v-sharps uh, by warthog they really do a great job um, you know getting that initial edge and they will get one pretty sharp even on their own especially if you uh, pop your stones off and flip them around and use the uh, polishing steels it, it it does pretty good it's not bad at all but um, it's not going to put quite that mirror edge on it like a, you know a buffing wheel or or a piece of leather with some compound on it or that sort of thing so anyway hope you enjoyed watching this and uh, hopefully um, everybody will be able to keep their knives sharp now thanks <laughs>